Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Colin, uh, but many, as many of you know, my friends call me Proto Colin, and I'm the ecosystem lead for the Filecoin project. And I'm just super, super excited to welcome the over 1,000 people who signed up for today's Filecoin Launchpad Demo Day. A huge, huge kudos and thank you to the teams who'll be presenting today. I've been absolutely impressed with the dedication, the creativity, the hard work of all of these teams, and I can't wait for everyone to see them showcase their tech and their products today. Uh, but before the main event, I'm going to kick things off with a quick overview of the state of the Filecoin ecosystem and highlight some of the tremendous momentum being generated by miners, developers, organizations, applications, projects, and people that are actively building on the network. So first, I'll touch on why the Filecoin project exists. Filecoin's mission is to create a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. We, we truly believe that humanity's most valuable resource is information, and we're incredibly passionate about storing and protecting that valuable resource in an efficiently priced and distributed way. Now, what that really means is addressing some of the major problems with today's cloud storage infrastructure. Decentralizing the cloud away from a small number of centralized providers, giving users full control over their data turning data storage pricing into an efficient market, allowing the network to set prices rather than a corporate pricing department, making storage verifiable to ensure when someone says they are storing your data, they actually are, and removing the issues around data integrity and fake news, and lastly, optimizing the world storage, putting the zettabytes of latent storage capacity around the world to work. Now, you can think of Filecoin as the Airbnb of cloud storage. Instead of just having to pick from a few cloud storage providers, you now have this very diverse set of options of different individuals and businesses around the world that want to compete in unique ways to store your data with different prices, locations, retrieval speeds, various certifications, even mission orientations. And so what that means is we move from a world where a small number of cloud storage providers control how your data is stored and priced to a completely global open marketplace where anyone can become a data storage provider and where the network itself can store content on every corner, bringing content right to the edge where it's needed the most by a set of clients. Now, why this model is interesting is in part due to the huge potential of the cloud storage industry. The amount of data we generate as a species is growing at a staggering rate. In 2020, the amount of data generated around the world was 58 zettabytes, and that's expected to go by 3x in the next four years to over 175 zettabytes. And what's even more important is that today, only 7% of the world's data that gets generated actually gets stored, and that ratio is decreasing over time to 5% of the next four years. Today's cloud storage infrastructure just simply can't keep up, and so we need to explore a different model if we want to set the web up for success in the future. Now, Filecoin transforms the fundamental business case and cost structure to be a storage provider. You know, in 2020, you need to be a good storage provider. You need all of these things on the screen. But what Filecoin allows is for storage providers to focus on the core back end of the business, a subset of the most valuable tasks a storage provider can do. And so similar to the powerful service Airbnb's network provides for individuals to homeowners to allow them to compete with hotels, that's similar to what the network does for cloud storage. So in short, Filecoin takes a market with some dominant cloud storage providers, allows all sorts of data storage providers to be able to compete with the scale, reliability, and price efficiency of the larger players. So that allows anyone from a small mining rig to an advanced data center to plug into the network and together provide a robust new foundation for humanity's information. So now let's get into the, the fun stuff here, which is some of the highlights of the last few months. And I'll start by saying that Filecoin, it's really important to note that Filecoin is not just software. Filecoin is a rapidly growing ecosystem of thousands of talented people working towards a common goal. And every day, more talented developers and entrepreneurs, partners, and community members join that ecosystem. And it's the strength and growth of that ecosystem together that makes Filecoin incredibly unique. I'll highlight uh, maybe four different sets of stakeholders in the presentation today, uh, miners, applications, community members, and new projects. And I'll start with miners. So the Filecoin mining community is absolutely thriving. Today, we have over 1,000 miners in the network, from individual folks mining in their homes to large data centers around the world. And together, that community of miners has grown the power in the network from zero to two exabytes in the last three months. 
that is an incredible amount of storage, enough to store 600 million HD movies, 10,000 Wikipedias, or 500 Netflix movie archives. The distribution of those miners are actually um, even more distributed some of, than some of the existing crypto networks. No mining operation has more than 4% of the network's power. And when you take a look at the mining operations, they are really professional storage uh, facilities. So you can check out many of these videos online. But it's it's interesting that they're all starting to differentiate themselves with their uh, with their clients, offering some unique services to win over deals and store people's data. Now, the Falcon mining community sets the tone for the network. And to me, that message is loud and clear. They are joining with enough reliable storage to completely change the cloud storage market um, of the future. So next, I'll cover uh, just a subset of the very long list of applications and clients that are joining and building and using the Filecoin ecosystem. There are over 100 professional organizations engaged in the Filecoin ecosystem right now, and I'll highlight just a few in each uh, in a few categories here. So with respect to consumer applications, Slate is one of the best consumer applications I've seen in Web3. It's a best-in-class experience for uploading, collecting, and sharing media. It's completely open source, and it's the first step towards enabling a thriving network for data storage and transactions powered by IPFS, Filecoin, and Textile. Fleet uh, recently unveiled their Space application, which is an open source, private file storage sharing and collaboration platform built on Filecoin, IPFS, and PowerGate. You can think of Space as a private, encrypted, peer-to-peer -peer version of Dropbox or Google Drive, and it's absolutely beautifully designed. And then just last month, Chainsafe Files also launched their uh, privacy-first cloud storage product. And this is engineered so that the app does not collect or sell your personal data in any way, shape, or form, really hitting the needs of, of privacy of its customers. I'll highlight just a few Web3 use cases. Uh, Filecoin's been collaborating with LivePeer to bring the, the future of decentralized video to the world. Uh, Biddle Labs and others are building decentralized video applications that are incredibly easy to use. If you go to file.video, you can upload and, uh, a decent, and, and, uh, an up, uh, a video on top of live field peer and Filecoin super easily. And I know we'll be, uh, showcasing another, uh, player in today's cohort. Um, Audius is also an incredible music streaming service. If you haven't tried Audius, please do. To, uh, it allows you to discover a uh, all sorts of new music, and it's one of my favorite applications in the Web3 space powered by IPFS. Some Web2 use cases. Uh, Starling Labs is backing up a whole host of data where verifiability is the key property. For example, the Shoah Foundation has video testimony from 55,000 survivors of genocides, nine petabytes of recordings, and Starling is a prototype application that adds that verified storage to Filecoin, guarantees that that data has not been tampered with which opens up a whole number of use cases for verifiable storage, from fake news to voter fraud to many, many more. And I know we'll be hearing from Jonathan later today in one of the intermissions. Uh, Filecoin Discover is also seeding the network with really valuable and culturally important data sets, uh, including many of the logos that you see here. On to DeFi use case. Uh, there are a whole host of DeFi applications popping up on Filecoin, and I'll mention just a few here. Uh, the Filecoin storage market is a, a sort of order book that allows miners to announce pricing and availability to the marketplace and, and browse those by clients. We have a collateralized loan market uh, that basically bridges between the Ethereum and Filecoin ecosystems that allows token holders to lend their fill to uh, using Ethereum smart contracts. And that's powered by Ren uh, and Aave as well. Uh, Wabi has uh, instituted their HPIL lending platform, uh, which has been very, very popular. They believe it'll grow to 100 million fill in loans in the future. And Ocean Protocol has been collaborating with Filecoin to publish data, buy and sell data, stake on data, launch your own data marketplaces, and create data DAOs, all sorts of really advanced functionality that you could only see in Web3. In terms of browser adoption, Brave has become the first browser to add native support for the IPFS protocol. So now Brave users will be able to seamlessly access the distributed web, which is absolutely huge for Web3. And IPFS has also been uh, in integrated in Opera for Android, and I'm sure we'll see many more announcements on that coming soon. And in terms of developer tooling, PowerGate upgraded its platform to version 2.0. 
PowerGate's one of the most popular developer tool toolkits that allows any developer to deploy multi-tiered storage across Filecoin and IPFS. And version 2.0 has improvements all over the place in deal importing, retrieval, improved reputation, uh, minor selectors, and a lot more. Infure released their Filecoin API, which is evolving quickly, and Truffle is uh, releasing a whole set of tools for developers over the coming months, including Preserve and a Ganache integration. And we continue to integrate with Ethereum uh, and other blockchains like uh, Polkadot, Ethereum Classic, and many others. Um, of course, that doesn't include all the teams presenting today, so I'm excited to, to kind of add those to the mix as well. In terms of community, there are over 6,000 folks that have actively contributed to our GitHub repos today, a staggering amount for a project that's, you know, just been uh, a few months old. Uh, those thousands of contributors have contributed to over 200 repos, and we actually have four separate teams developing four separate implementations of the Filecoin protocol. Venus actually just two weeks ago started interoperating on mainnet. So we have two nodes, Lotus and Venus, completely interoperating, which is absolutely huge for the purposes of uh, security and functionality. And Forest, which is being developed by Chainsafe and Fuhan being developed by Soramitsu, they'll be joining the network as additional implementations in the next few months. We have all sorts of ecosystem collaborators from ecosystem to developer collaborators to research collaborators. And, you know, believe it or not, there are still global Filecoin communities having meetups and conferences all over the world, as well as virtual conferences, including Liftoff Week, the Storage Market Summit, and many, many others. Now, of course, there's more to come. And finally, uh, I want to touch on new projects. There are 250 projects entering the ecosystem today. Uh, including the 13 teams that we'll hear from, you know, in just a few minutes. And uh, these projects originally stem from Project Ignite, which was a whole host of events to, to spark the, uh, the new projects in the ecosystem. That included HackFS, which had over 470 hackers and 130 projects that submitted a whole host of showcases that you can view on that link right there. Uh, we had Spark Hackathon, which had over 800 participants uh, from universities, and we'll be doing much more of this this year. We had the Apollo program, which is powered by Gitcoin, which had 50 teams and 130 Apollo fellows going through an intense six-week mentorship program. Of course, we had Filecoin Launchpad, uh, which the teams received, uh, you know, a whole bunch of mentorship over the last three months. And Filecoin Frontier is yet another accelerator based in Asia in Singapore and Shanghai that kicks off on February 1st, just a few days from now. So get excited about that one as well. In addition, a few ecosystem funds have joined the, the, the space to fund startups that are in the later stage um, and developing on IPFS, Filecoin, and the decentralized web. Fembushi uh, has committed $20 million in Filecoin to invest in, in uh, applications and ecosystem uh, partners within uh, the Filecoin ecosystem. And Huabi has committed $10 million as part of their broader incubation center as well, which is super, super exciting. And of course, there's many, many more of those to come. So that was just a uh, quick overview of the four main stakeholders. And I want to conclude this talk with uh, just a few thoughts for the developers and entrepreneurs on the call today in the ecosystem, as well as those participating and presenting. First, um, know that you are pioneers of a movement here. And so be ambassadors for others looking to join the ecosystem. The quality of the community will ultimately dictate the success of the Filecoin ecosystem. So as the early adopters on this call, be welcoming, be helpful to new developers that are entering the ecosystem. Two, the Filecoin protocol is yours to evolve. Take ownership of the Filecoin protocol and its roadmap. If things are missing in the protocol itself, if there are gaps, if there are improvements to be made, work with the community and enact change in the underlying protocol. Don't don't view the Filecoin protocol as fixed. It's an ever-evolving uh, piece of code. And finally, take a long-term view. We are just getting started. My first startup actually was the first camera app for the iPhone one. You know, this is way, way back over 10 years ago. It was called Snapshot. You probably haven't heard of it, but it was the number one photo app at the time. And so we had the earliest version of filters, 
uh, social sharing functionality. And while that startup didn't make it, our team learned the fundamentals of tools and building mobile apps. And many of our team members, especially the development team, moved on and became some of the lead engineers on many mobile applications in the iOS and Android spaces for years to come. Uh, you know, and some of those apps really defined the mobile app industry. So you're entering at a time where we're we're in the first out of the first inning of this ecosystem. Take a long term view and make sure uh, to kind of stick with the ecosystem and continue to build because the future 10 years from now is going to amaze everyone on this call. Uh, that's my talk. Thank you for listening. Uh, and. So we can uh, now move to the main event, which I'm super excited for. I'll call up Sean from the Tachyon team to introduce our demos and presentations. Thank you.